You know, when you and I started casting this league, Monty, about uh, back in 2013, when it got to this point in the season, there was, like, really insane stuff. It's gotten much more <laughs> tame compared to what we used to see, huh? I, I think, uh, especially if there's nothing on the line between GE Tigers and SK Telecom in our last match, I'm pretty sure that game is going to be pretty troll. But oh, I hope so. All right, we got real bands coming in at the very least. Annie and LeBlanc going away, of course. That champion, very good for Goong. Goong not known for having the largest champion pool. Urgot apparently not played by Najin. So we could see a first pick Sejuani here from the GE Tigers. Yeah. So you ever think at the start of the season you'd be saying things like, well, we've got an Urgot ban, so we might see a first pick Sejuani. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I did not think I'd be saying it, but I'm happy I am, though. I'm very yeah. happy I am. It's good to see these shifts. It's a brave new world in 5.5, and it's pretty cool. There's that Lulu ban, of course. You don't want to play against the Juggermaw from GE, and they're going to ban that Twisted Fate against Goong. So despite the poor game from him last time, it still yeah, is a threat to worry it's about. It's still so good for Najin's play style. That's the yeah. thing, is that it's very clear what Najin wants to do. They want to play a passive mid laner and you do that will power up the side lanes. Yeah. Because we've seen what happens when OQ starts to get kills in games. He can completely take over the tempo well, and absolutely destroy you. It's pretty easy to imagine, too, that that was just kind of an off game for Goon. Okay, I don't know what the Goon. Evelyn ban is about. That is a bit odd. I mean, uh, Evelyn has been in the conversation 5.5 anyway, but giving Callisto away, I don't know. <laughs> well, they, they basically forced GE to first pick that one. Uh, yeah. So they knew that. That means they can get the Sejuani pick themselves. And Oki's probably pretty confident on any AD carry that he's going to yeah. be playing. They must have an answer to Kalista at the very least. Well, they take that the Maokai. Eve, the Eve oh, ban no. is so weird, though. I haven't seen many of these junglers playing Evelyn at all. And Evelyn is still, I think, inferior to most of the other tank junglers. She doesn't offer the same level of crowd control, and she doesn't do damage anymore either. So, a bit odd. Oh, Nautilus and Cassiopeia immediately locked in for GE. Wow, that was instant. Where is that Nautilus going to go? Is it, We've seen it in the jungle. Will it go to support like we've seen in places like NA? Or maybe even the top lane. Who knows? Yeah, there there have been a lot of these players, particularly Trace, as you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, who have been playing Nautilus in the top side. However, yeah. he does have teleport ignite up right now so we may see Hecarim come in instead in the very end but whether that's going to be a jungler or whether that's going to be a support like you're saying I I don't know Kuro didn't have a great game on Cassiopeia last time hmm. and Goon could be going to Xerath he's a he's a decent Xerath player he's certainly not as flashy as some of the other Xeraths in this league but he will have an easy time farming in the laning phase on that champion oh and Duke is gonna get rumble that's that's a bit dangerous Yep, they'll lock it in. So uh, no Maokai picked up. It's a little bit surprising to see Maokai so fall so far down the draft. Yeah, this Come is Come on, Gorilla, do it for odd. me. He's not going to pick it. He's, he already told me he wouldn't, but he's trolling. So Come on, Gorilla. The problem with Najin right now is in this very tanky meta, they picked three AP champions already. So what they're going to select for their AD carry is a bit concerning right here. We could see conceivably play Nidalee. He has never played jungle Nidalee before. Well, I mean, if there would be a time to experiment, it would be now. And it looks like it might be a top Nautilus then if this Nidalee is locked in. As you'd imagine Leona is going to be going to the support role. Unless it's a jungle Leona. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, looks like it will be support Nautilus, actually. Okay. Great. Well, it's not barred, but it's okay. I'm excited to see Gorilla support Nautilus. Okay, well, GE Tiger is showing some new look right now. First game for them on support Nautilus. First game on Jungle Nidalee as well. And will this be Twitch, actually, as a last pick? Yeah. And it will be. Wow, All right, okay, the old nice. Najin special. Back when Prey was on the team with Kane, Twitch, Thresh. Yeah. Uh, definitely a very scary combination. And Prey, of course, a Twitch master. And a, a lot of these tank buffs they just wonder if some of these big hyper carries like Twitch were going to be coming back. And it looks like the answer could be yes right here. You have a lot of range too. Interestingly, especially with Twitch and Xerath, you can create picks very easily. Twitch appears and Xerath can ult from a really long way away. Yeah, it's a cool combo. to support you on that. Also, of course, Cassiopeia, pretty immobile too. And that's usually where you gank with Twitch after you get your Blade of the Ruined King. 
Nodgen. So very interesting stuff coming out of Nodgen. And that, that does be answer uh, the question, too, about if they were going to have enough AD in the late game. Yeah, a lot of experimentation being done by the GE Tigers as well, too. And again, you know, they can't give away anything before the playoffs, so why not just try things out? Because the more games you win with champions you haven't played before, the more you give your opponents to think about. So correct. I think, you know, win or lose, we're going to see GE play a lot of stuff they haven't played before just to kind of mess with people. Yeah, it's funny, too. Uh, I was actually talking to Lee at IEM, and I was watching some of their scrims. I'll tell the story in a second. All right, it's time to get in the game, guys. We go GE Tigers versus Najin EM Fire. And please continue, Monty. Tell us your story. <laughs> so, uh, there was a big open practice area at IEM, so it's not like these scrims were very private or anything like that. There were a lot of people watching, so I don't feel bad talking about this. But I was watching him, and they were playing Jungle Nidalee. And I was like, hmm, I've never seen Lee play Jungle Nidalee. I haven't even seen him play it on his solo queue account. So, I asked him because he was not doing great, Have you ever played? Nidalee before, and he said no. <laughs> it was yep. his first game on Nidalee. <laughs> so, uh, he has learned this champion, I can tell you, since I am. So we'll have to see how it, if it's uh, as good as perhaps his Jarvan or more in line with his Rengar play. Well, less, than a, less than a month of practice <laughs> going into this uh, jungle Nidalee here. And it's very mechanical champion as well. Very yeah, difficult to play properly. So, we'll see how he does. Yep. But again, you know, I mean, the thing is, this is like the most value that GE can get for themselves out of this match, and that is messing with your future opponents. You play as many different champions as you can, and it doesn't matter if you win or lose. You just need to get them thinking about that. If you, you know, because then they're going to have a better chance of preparing against something that they're not going to face. Yep. So GE can just use these last couple matches to just mess with people and. That is it. What a good position to be in. All right, and W traps have been laid down. Nidalee traps at the Krugs right here, so they are going oh. to be going for... Oh, that's something. ...the Krugs start with a little bit of help. And I imagine Peanut is going to give Kane an OQ, the Gromp right here, which is what is going to happen. Najin almost always gives a can... Where'd the XP go? Went to OQ, he's level two. Oh. Oh, sorry, it was on top right there. I got confused because the thresh, they were on top of each other with levels, but yes. Praise is going to so, get two from the Ancient Krug as well. Yeah, Najin almost always tries to give OQ an advantage like this because they know if he wins lane, it really drastically increases uh, their ability to win the game. And he and Kane are so good at getting these advantages out. And you can see Gorilla started with his uh, E as well too, so just a lot of AoE to help Prey. Yeah, you just wave in. Yeah, you maxi now yep. on support Nautilus, so should be. Of course, that cooldown was reduced pretty drastically. Yeah, Nautilus got a lot of nice buffs over the last couple he patches. He did. He did. I really am happy about that too because I love watching mm -hmm. Nautilus. He's fun. Bigger shield, shorter cooldown on E, and the Q is still as fun as it ever was. All right, so Lee is actually pathing over to enemy red right now. This is a bit risky. Yeah. But Sejuani not in a place to fight. And so he will go ahead and get the red steal and three buff after coming over that. So just quick with some help from Smed, blue to enemy red. Yeah, you know that the GE Tigers are going to just mess with Peanut as well, too. He's the least experienced person on this Najin team so, right now, so put the pressure on. Now, the reason why he was able to do that so cleanly, uh, by the way, is because now when they did the Grom, Peanut didn't hit level two off of it, so he had to go blue and then take an additional camp before actually heading over to red. So that's a very specific timing if you know that the enemy bot lane has gotten that Grom, you can just go blue to red immediately, uh, or Lee got the XP off of his Grom. So like, that's a very specific timing uh, that you can do because Peanut helped to leash the Grom. So there was a little bit of a window right there, particularly with Nidalee, where you can pounce over the Baron wall. Uh, very interesting, actually. So that's, yeah. that's a pretty calculated start. And 
it's particularly good against Najin. Like I said, they really like to give one of those early jungle camps over. So if you know, Najin does this pretty much every game. So if you know they're going to do that, then there is this option with Nidalee against Najin to do this. Good research, GE Tigers. Cool. Pina coming up. Oh, he's going to be spotted by a war, but also spotted, of course, because of the Raptors. And meanwhile, we've got the classic Nar versus Rumble match in the top lane. Classic Season 5 top lane matchup, I would say. Wow, look at this, this counter-jungling by Lee. Yeah. He's just going nuts onto... Well, he's really punishing Peanut. I mean, they saw Peanut come into the top lane there, so watch it, or so Lee rather is like, all right, well, I'll just yep. go take more of your camps, I guess. And perfectly safe as well. He has yeah. the Sentinels right there in the jungle to go ahead and make a play, and they have a lot of hard CC in this bottom lane, so if Lee can land a spear right here, there may be some good follow-up. He's got a pretty good spear there. There it is, and oh. that was interesting. I think huh. that Mark was a little bit delayed right there. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what happened. I thought I saw the auto attack come in from Gorilla, but I think maybe he checked it so he didn't get the stun. Yeah. It was interesting. Very weird. Yeah. Weird. Mysteries. Mysteries of the bot lane. Peanut is behind now. After giving up that camp, of course, the Lee was on the opposite side of the map, so he didn't have to give one up right there. Now they're setting up around this dragon. They want to go ahead and make an attempt on it early, of course, and Italy's so good at taking out quick dragons. Yeah, and Gorilla's gonna help out. So GE Tigers should be able to get this early dragon. Looks like Prey's gonna walk up for a moment to add a little bit more damage in. And look at the vision, too, that our Fantastic. observer is showing us from GE. Yeah, this dragon is so safe. Yeah, GE just really doing a good job of outmaneuvering Najin right now, and especially taking advantage of Peanut's positioning. Yeah, a little bit of early rend right there, but nothing really they could have done. I mean, Goong has been forced up under his tower. He's actually pretty far behind in terms of... Oh, there's Equalizer coming down. Smeb taking a lot of damage. He's still got his flash, so doesn't even need to use that to escape. Duke, though, pushing him out of lane, and this will help him get a little bit of a CS lead, perhaps. Battle for the top MVP going oh, yeah. on right now, <laughs> up in the top side. Yeah. Who knew Smeb would be a contender? Oh, Gorilla gets grabbed with the Death Sentence, brought in with the play. He's going to flash away. There's the E to get a little bit of a slow, but he's so low right now. The poison not quite enough. The Ignite was used as well by Kane, but no first blood quite yet. Wow. Uh, yeah, they flew two summoners, though, just for the Ignite, so that's going to be pretty nice if you are Najin. And that's that danger that we talk about with Kane and OQ, who really are fantastic in this laning phase. Well, we don't see many bot lanes escape from an all-in like that from OQ and Kane, so credit it's to GE for making it out. It's really interesting, oh too. Oh, I think we could okay. see a bit of a dive here. Gorilla is low. They're going to bring him the fades call. Throw him at Kane. Kane takes some damage. Peanut tanking the turret well, so first blood will go over to Najin. Kane picks that one up. Here comes Lee. Nice spear onto OQ. He could come over the wall. Played away by Kane. He's going to try to execute OQ anyway. There's the flash getting low, and Lee should get it. Oh, Xerathal coming in. Meanwhile, OQ's still alive. They're going to turn on to Peanut now, though. Kuro picks up that kill for the mid laner, and OQ on oh. the run. Dodges a spear. He's invisible right now. He's still chasing. Threw down the trap. Didn't connect with OQ, and OQ's actually going to make it out. Wow, he actually <laughs> manages to get the execute. Not bad. <laughs> sneaky. Uh, very sneaky, and good response. Kuro already coming down to that bottom side. And Lee turning that one around. Great there with the flash in order to put down some more pressure after that dive onto Gorilla. Peanut used his flash really early right there, actually, in order to get onto Gorilla with the Arctic Assault. Oh. Here we go. Yep, let's try. He's going to try. Smeb, there's Equalizer. Duke trapped way behind enemy lines at this point. Lee coming up to help secure that kill. Look at all the damage going down onto Gorilla, though. Got close, but there's a kill for the GE Tigers. They're up 3-1 to one right now, and it looks like the blue buff is going to be handed over to Goong in the meantime. You have to be so careful about that for Duke. I mean, that was a really fast roam coming in, but Gorilla, after he died, just picking up the mobility boots and heading to the top side to help out Smeb, and it actually managed to work right there as he pulls himself along, courtesy of the inhibitor. Yep. So, you know, you have to little, give a little bit of credit to uh, Goong as well in that uh, previous fight we saw, because that ult is what forced Lee to kind of back off for a moment. That allowed OQ to get out, so. Well, sort of get out. <laughs> well, I mean, it pushed him back. I mean, well, he died, but he didn't give a kill over, you know? Right, but, you know, still 
had to uh, use that death time or lose a little bit of XP right there. Yeah. So. But not giving the gold to the yeah. enemy team is well worth it. It's pretty nice. So we'll see what OQ can do right here. He did have that nice CS lead before that little bit of a failed dive right there from Peanut and the rest of Najin. Now whether he can turn it into something else, we'll have to wait and see. Very interested in what GE is going to be bringing with this composition. And Lee uh, doing some good work already on Italy for mm -hmm. a new champion for him. Yeah, again, you know, we've seen him do a lot of counter jungling. He's been able to deny a lot of camps from Peanut. Peanut has caught up in XP, though, now, but uh, Lee already with the enchantment. Kuro actually still ha holding this CS lead here against the Zerath. Interesting that he hasn't been poked out of this matchup and has been able to deny so much. Lee's walked through that, that ward like four <laughs> times now. Still oh, doesn't, doesn't know that it. it's there, but it's going oh, to expire man. anyway. It's a good ward placement up against this Nidalee. Peanut sneaking into the bottom side again. They really want to power up OQ. Peanut has six. Also, right. both flashes still down. I suppose that is one of GE's wards, though, so uh, Lee not quite as worried about clearing that one. Oh, he showed out of the brush, actually. Huh. That Whoops. was very awkward. Very awkward attempt at a lantern gank right there. Oh, there's a gank in mid lane. Goon getting extremely low. There's a flash and the poison from Kuro. Not enough to finish him off. So Goon burns both summoners, but he makes it out with his life. About a minute until the next dragon now. I will say that Lee's spears are much more accurate than the last time I saw him play Nidalee. <laughs> <laughs> He's had a couple weeks of practice, I suppose. <laughs> That's the funny thing about GE, though. You know, I mean, if you, ha you have these sort of open scrims against the other teams there and you just decide to play Nidalee for the first time, why not? <laughs> well, you don't want to give anything away. All the no. teams were there able to watch. So, yep. so why not? Well, not a lot going on at the moment. It's all going to be about the second dragon. GE already has some pretty good vision, though. Najin wants to get a bit back. They're going to try. If they can get the Rift Scuttle, it'll be pretty nice. Yeah, they have a good setup on the dragon right now. Uh, they have to finish this off. OQ still needs to push out the bottom side. It's unfortunate for him that he doesn't quite have that Blade of the Ruin King yet. Yeah. And we'll see how well Najin's able to create those picks because, of course, Twitch, that AD carry who, once he gets the blade, really starts roaming in the mid game. He's all about getting kills and securing an advantage around objectives. And then late game, that's when you really open up with the spray and pray. Yeah, I mean, if you think back to what we saw players like Deft do with Twitch uh, last year, just after you get that blade, yeah, you just stealth around the map and gank works gotcha. pretty well. Has the setup right here. They won't have Meganar for the TP. Smeb just. Here comes GE. Here we go. Teleports used. People coming down right now. Najin on the run already. Gorilla goes in. Flashes for a big E. A lot of damage done. Kuro has to get back over the wall, but he's been able to pour some damage on Duke. Gets the kill anyway. Duke turning around. Actually, GE chasing OQ, or rather Kane, way deep into the mid lane. And that should do it. Yep. A kill for Smeb. Oh, the ultimate from Goon almost taking down Gorilla, but not quite. Peanut gets out. Looks like GE might be able to claim this dragon. Goon might try to poke them out, but I don't know if he's going to be able to do that. We'll see. He's going to really? try. Oh, that helps. Really surprising that Najim wasn't able to do more right there, considering their positioning. There's so many spears, and considering the fact, too, that Smep didn't have his ult available, but really it was all about Kuro's ult in that fight, because as they were trying to kite, Kuro came in from the flank and just got a monster ult off on the side. Let's take a look at this again. Gorilla starts this fight by getting hood hooked. Ults OQ immediately. See Kuro right here, gets hit. Peanut uses the Sejuani ult on one target, but there's a cleanse there, who's down, but uh, he does end up lasting it out. And then the rest of GE powers forward, but a really, really good ult from Kuro on the side. And a bit of a misplay, I think, for Pina to use his ult in that direction. He should have used it on the rear and thrown it out, and then they could have just focused Kuro down instead and not had Prey catch up from the back. Yep. And Prey, like we've seen so much this season, was able to get 
really good position in that fight. Able to put a lot of damage on with that Callista. He's got his Bloodthirster now, too. A little bit of action in the bot lane. Gorilla 1-1-4 one, one, and four so far on the support Nautilus, which is a pretty good start. Yeah, also, Kuro, uh, he did build Tier to Abyssal and instead completed the Seraphs and starting to get up there in terms of his stacks as well on the Cassiopeia. So running this very late game oriented carry. That's right. A little bit of a CS lead now for Smeb in the top lane as well. So he's been able to dominate with that now. And here we go. Blade is done. That means it's time to kill Kuro. Kuro does have his cleanse back up now. Well, looks like OQ is going to play it safe for the moment, though. Well, they have so many pink wards right on the right side of the mid lane that they can, in fact, try and make a play. Let's see if they do. Meanwhile, bot lane's getting pushed up by the GE Tigers. They'll have to go defend that. Yep, that's what they're going to do. They're hiding and waiting for them in this brush of the pink ward. Oh, right now. there's OQ. Gorilla, there's the ult onto him. OQ manages to get out on the lantern. Oh, nice grab from Gorilla. Look at all that damage from Callista, though. There's an easy kill for Prey. Gorilla comes in with the Fates call afterwards there. Now they're trying to go in on the Peanut and Kane. It might let him go here. Will they get the damage? Not quite, but either way, a really nice play from Prey and Gorilla. That was just so cleanly executed. So patient as well. Yeah. Uh, waiting for Twitch to come back. And you'll notice what happened on the map too, that the entire team baited Twitch into that. Because if you were watching Kuro in the mid lane, he had backed off all the way next to his tier one. So he was like, hey, you can't make a play here. Because they saw him recall, knew that he was going to buy the blade, knew that he may have been trying to make a play on the mid lane. And so basically Kuro just walked back. They baited him into the bottom lane where they were standing in that unusual location with a pink ward. And it seemed as though they had recalled. And then they caught him right in that trap. Yeah. Really smart play from GE. Well, that's just kind of what we've come to expect from them. That was so smart. Yeah. I really like that, uh, the 2v2 that Prey and Gorilla were able to do then. I mean, Gorilla knew he was going to get kind of trapped <laughs> in the other players, so he gets right out in the fake call. Yeah, very nice, and yep. then they almost turned it into something else as well. Right there we yeah. do see they had to use the Scrying Orb to check that pink warded <laughs> brush because uh, they were going to do it again. Yep, they better were do it again. Uh, they didn't have the depth charge this time, but even so, still could have gotten a really nice chunk down onto OQ. And, GE's doing a wonderful job of playing around OQ this game. Yeah, they really haven't given him any ganking opportunities just yet. We'll see what he's going to try now. A little bit of time yet until Dragon comes back up. I'm just really liking Gorilla's Nautilus so far. Seems to really be able to know what he's doing with that. Yeah, that early hiccup, but they did turn that gank around. And yep. All that action has been pretty much in the bottom later around the Dragon so far, and GE's just been outplaying Najin every step of the way. Yeah, pretty much. They have the CS leads in what? all the lanes. They have a 4,000 gold advantage, and this is really good because GE has been struggling in these early parts of the game. This is where they've been weak. Yeah, honestly, I mean, we've talked that it's not you know the most important match, but GE is looking very, very tight. Yeah, early on. and smart. I mean, they're they're laying these traps, and Najin's kind of walking into them, and they're complex traps too. It's it's not something that you see coming, but they're really in Najin's head. Starting you know, for this game from Lee's jungle pathing on this Nidalee, and then going into this, this pink ward trap at the bottom side, and well, it, this is exactly, it's been really really good. This is exactly what GE wants too, because now if they can show this and win with it while using champions they haven't shown yet before. In pro play, I mean that's that's something they're giving they're giving their opponents in the playoffs so much to think about now. Yeah, I agree. You want to just keep on rolling with these new champions, even if you don't have any intention to play them beyond this one match. Yeah. Maybe you can get a free ban, uh, or at least you're going to get some pro practice with them as well. So if you have to pull them out, you feel a little bit more confident. And look at these towers going down. This is a massive, massive gold lead now. It's rare that we see the GE Tigers with this level of lead out of the laning phase. Are you kidding me? Yeah, 19 that's a good minutes point. and 7,000 gold. It's like an S SKT game. <laughs> yeah. Faker. Yeah, exactly. It does not look like a GE Tigers game, but they've been doing it really well. And
This Twitch pick, uh, I guess this was Najin's answer to the Callista. I do think it works really nicely with the AoE in their composition, and especially with Sejuani Hold. You hit a three, four man Sejuani ultimate and then spray and pray on you, holy cow, you're going to die fast. Yeah, and I mean, that's still something that Najin can try to set up, and it looks like they might have an opportunity at the Dragon Fit, but the lead that GE has right now, I just don't think that Najin has the damage to really fight this. That dragon's going to go over. That's three dragons now for the GE Tigers. And yeah, like you said, the big story here is just how good the GE Tigers look early game. Not used to this. <laughs> Not used to it at all. Now, yeah. Najin, part of their lead has been from Najin's own aggression, and they've been playing more defensively, particularly that earlier dive. But they were also really active in fighting that second dragon. Uh, so they weren't willing to give it up. They decided to engage. They decided to go for it anyway. Well, we also saw things like Gorilla walking all the way up to the top lane to make plays too. So we usually don't see him uh, roam quite that far. Here we go. Kuro now coming up with Lee. Yeah. Want to make something happen? They know. It's they know it's a three v three. They know it's a three v three. Goon is not in mid lane, so they they should be worried. But they're going to try and bait this anyway. I mean, Smev is not anywhere close to being Nice Oh, job. got out of the ult. Yeah, only got slowed, and that was a flash death sentence attempt from Kane, and it missed. So smart Smev of Najin not to commit any further after yeah. that, though. Too many MIA on the map. Smev had to flash for that, but flash for flash, and it's a pretty good trade for uh, GE Tigers. Well, they also got the. Sedge, Sedge ult out, which yeah. is really important for Najin. That's one of their primary tools for engaging. And they can rest a little easier when that's not available for use. Well, GE Tigers, so they, they've gotten this lead. And we don't see this that, that often, like we said. So now the question is, how cleanly can they close it out from here? Mm, they don't have the best sieging composition, so it's probably just mostly going to be about putting pressure on Dragon and Baron, honestly. Yeah, forcing some fights and then getting turrets and things off of that. Yeah, I mean, Callista does have Bloodthirster. Ah, wow, going Rando in second. That's not an item we typically see on Korean Callistas. Yeah, Rune is usually, usually kind of bypass for IE and stuff. Well, you'd usually go uh, Bloodthirster and PD or Bloodthirster and Shiv instead. So, interesting, very interesting buy here. Well, you know, you do have a lot of slows so well you have the slow from nautilus you have the stun slash sl slow from kuro and you know if smeb's able to get into the back lines of nar too you do have an opportunity for Callista to just fill everybody with spears looks like they're going to get this tier two turret just simply outmaneuvering Najin for that one they didn't even need to siege nope now they're going to head up to the top side but with the bloodthirster wow. you may be able to get a few extra hits and obviously that attack speed from Runin is going to be very useful yeah. for clearing out these towers. And GE's just doing a good oh. job of zoning around the outside. On the Gorilla, going to use that slow, going to save his ult for now. They just wanted the turret. It's really well played. Uh, OQ yeah. still on the bottom side of the map trying to farm up, <laughs> you know, to some sort of relevancy right here. But Gorilla has been doing a great job of playing around the back side of the turret and scaring him off. They're going to go for a 22 minute Baron. Wow, and there's not a they lot can of do it. There's from Najin either. There's a ton of damage from Cassiopeia in Italy. Yeah. All right, Najin may be trying to contest this, but it's going to be difficult. That Baron's already low. They're not going to get it. Yep, Baron taken. They're going to go right in on Dagoon as well. OQ trying to escape. They use the ult on Dagoon. They get a couple knockups out of it. Nice Sejuani ult, but G's going to oh. turn it around. Good equalizer, but look at that Nar ult. Najin just getting evaporated. Double kill for Kuro. They get the Baron, they get the kills. Even Gorilla makes it out. And yeah, this one could end up being pretty quick. Wow, Najin looking so dominant, or GE rather, yeah, looking so GE. dominant in this game. This very different than what we've seen. We didn't expect an inhibitor going down in 23 minutes into this one, but GE wow. has taken every advantage. Well, they're making it look easy. It's, it's uh, pretty interesting. All right, so let's take a look at this one again. Really good Baron, by the way. Uh, Goong is gonna kind of face check that brush. Can't do that onto Zara. Look at Gorilla, flash E, and then OQ just gets demolished yeah. by the damage coming out of Kuro. Lee there on the side, really good positioning to continue to get those spears in. And Lee's been really good on this Nidalee this game. Yeah, he has. Practice makes perfect, huh? He apparently was practicing quite a bit. Yeah, this is... <laughs> Not the same Italy that I saw, that's for sure. No. Yeah, and again, you know, with with how well this game is going for GE, this really just kind of adds a couple more champions to the list of things to be scared of if you're, you know, SKT, CJ, or Jin Air. 
Wow, Gorilla just going man mode and just walking into the jungle and saying, hey, man, what are you going to do? What a good game from GE. Yeah. I'm very impressed. This very is good. by far the most decisive we've seen them look. Yep. And aggressive as well. It's, it's very refreshing to see them kind of take the initiative instead of waiting for their opponents Teleport. to make the mistake. Coming in, they really want the second inhibitor. And the, yeah. Oh, they're going to go in on to uh, Peanut. There's a flash to get away. They're going to take the second inhibitor very, very early. Smep is Meganar. Came in with that teleport right away. And GE, they may be able to close right here. Najin, I don't think they're going to win a team fight. Wow, nice Nar ult to OQ. They use the summoner heal, try to keep alive. There's a four-man Sejuani ult. They already took down Duke. Looks like there will be a kill on the Kuro, but it doesn't really stop the siege. Look at that knockup. Oh, man. Wow, goodbye, Gorilla. Finally dying to the turrets, but really not good Prey destroys call. everybody. Yeah. That was sick. And look at this 25 minutes, and the GE Tigers destroy Najin the Empire. And this is a Najin that's been looking a lot better lately. GE just comes up, two new picks, crushes him. And one of that was, I think that was, was that our fastest game this season? It 25 may, minutes? I think it was. I think it was. That is such a fast game on this patch. Luton's Echo picked up on the very yeah. at the very end there onto Kuro's Cassiopeia. 25 minutes and nine seconds. I'm pretty Jeez. sure. I'm pretty sure the the second closest game was like 27, 28 minutes. Yeah, this is like 99 percent sure. Very impressive match from yeah. the GE Tigers. So a couple, a couple new picks, and they managed to. Take advantage of Najin's mistakes and well, these play, two new, play more aggressively than well, we've seen in the past. And these two new picks help them do that. I mean, both gorillas and